All right, it is two or two o'clock. It's ten o'clock. Welcome to Stream Geeks. We are typically live every Monday at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but today it's ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got a very special edition of Stream Geeks live for you today. We are going to be joined by Pennsylvania State Senator Dalen Leach to talk about some really interesting topics. An adult use cannabis bill. We're going to be talking about an interesting scholarship that they've just released, the Pennsylvania State Senators. And we're going to take a walk around town. All this and more is going to be coming up next, guys. Welcome back. I'm joined by Pennsylvania State Senator Dalen Leach. Good to be here. Thanks Welcome. for having me, Thanks for joining us. And he's asked me to call him Dalen, so we're keeping it kicked back and relaxed here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm dorky enough, as I say, without being called Senator, so I just prefer Dalen. That's fine. And it's great to be with you today, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about the various things we're doing to change the world. So, uh, appreciate it. Absolutely. We're thrilled to have you here. For our viewers, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And so we're so thrilled to be doing this today. Something that we've never done before here at Stream Geeks is speak to an elected official official on live video. So we're really happy to have you. Yeah, I, I've it. never spoken to someone who's not an elected official, so it's new for me too. <laughs> you guys keep a tight knit Yeah, community. Yeah, we usually just eschew the opportunities you know? okay yeah yeah i get that vibe totally <laughs> so there's a few things that we're going to cover today and we're talking all about video on our show all the time and something that your team just announced this week i thought would be great to start on because we're both thinking about video there's this scholarship that apparently is yearly you're gonna have to brush me up on this type of stuff mm -hmm. that involves students and video can you cover that a little bit sure we we do this thing every year where we give the senate gives a scholarship out or a, a couple scholarships out uh to people on this program called talk to your senator um and essentially what it is is uh, we have a different issue every year uh, this year it's farming and agriculture, and we ask people to submit videos to talk about whatever aspect of that they want to talk about. Uh, and then uh, we pick a winner and give them uh, a whole ton of money. Um, and so uh, we just uh, put that out a couple days ago. If someone uh, has a video or wants to make a video and send it to us or send it to your senator to do that, uh, that would be great. But uh, this gives a, a, an opportunity for young people to get involved in mm -hmm. a political issue they care about. Um, and get some attention. Um, and it also helps us uh, hear from our constituents and also just sort of spread the word about an important issue in Pennsylvania. It's interesting that that you guys have chosen video as the venue for submitting these applications. Much like we're doing today, video has become a really great way to reach mm -hmm. an audience, especially a younger area. And we focus a lot on that here. Paul, why is our scholarship that we have out there not a video submission? Yeah, Paul. <laughs> well, we'll have to do that next year. All right, moving on to the next and most important topic of today, we're going to talk about this bill you have, this adult use cannabis bill. Can you give us a little background and explanation of what that means exactly? Sure. Um, so uh, in 2016, uh, I introduced and passed the medical marijuana bill, the medical cannabis bill in Pennsylvania. That program that was a, you? That was me. Well, um, congratulations. Yeah, That's now it's awesome. two first for your little couch situation isn't yes. it um but uh and it's uh the program a lot of people uh, around the country say it's the best in the nation uh and uh you know it's up and running there's a dispensary near you no doubt and uh there's always some bumps you know along the road but but hundreds of thousands of people are taking advantage of it and frankly the best part of my job now is when someone comes up and says you know this has really helped my child this has really helped my mother who had cancer it's helped me and whatever so that is terrific because we don't do a lot of things that actually help people in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> so, uh, but the other part of this, in my mind, has always been ending prohibition uh, on adult use. They call it recreational, uh, but adult use is what we're supposed to call it because uh, it's it, it's a bit more of a serious approach to the issue. Sure. Um, but uh, what our bill does is it ends uh, prohibition, which is a horrible, pernicious, cruel, heartless policy. Uh, which destroys lives, which costs us billions of dollars, and which funds violent drug cartels. 
um, and create a protocol where you could have the legal sale, use, uh, collection of tax dollars, mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurship, uh, testing, safety, all those things uh, relating it to cannabis. Um, and so uh, it's a complicated bill. We spent months and months going around the country, meeting with stakeholders, meeting with people who had done this before, uh, learning from the successes and failures and mistakes of other states that have mm -hmm. done this. And we've come up with a bill, which again, a lot of people around the country are saying uh, is, is the best bill out there. Uh, even the Philadelphia Inquirer uh, called it the gold standard. Uh, and so now we just have to get it passed. But, um, but you know, keep in mind, if we're successful, that'll be between 20 and 25,000 people a year, mostly young, mostly disproportionately people of color who are put into the criminal justice system sure. uh, for using a substance which is in every single way far more benign than alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that. Plus, uh, we will create an industry. I'm going to Las Vegas in December to something called the MJ Biz Conference. When I went to my first cannabis conference like 11 years ago, there were like 75 people there. There'll be 26,000 people at this conference. Wow, that's uh, incredible. Every kind of business you can imagine, not just growing and dispensing and all the things that touch the plant, but things like marketing and tracking and uh, packaging and mm -hmm. different clippers and different soils and every just millions of different businesses that are getting started based on cannabis becoming a big thing. So uh, this is the f part of our economic future. Um, it'll save a ton of money that we're not uh, spending incarcerating and prosecuting and monitoring people. So, uh, and I'm happy to talk about the particulars, but broadly speaking, uh, this is going to do an awful lot of good for an awful lot of people. It's going to be great for the state. And uh, there is no downside to this whatsoever. Right. So one of the things you said that was really interesting was talking about the criminal justice system. And and what are the benefits that we might see there if a bill like this were to pass? Well, one of the things we have is a uh, huge, massive over-incarceration problem. Mm -hmm. um, I read your bail. Your that's bail a, that's bail. not our bill. We mm -hmm. can talk about that. But and it's sort of related. But Think of it this way. Between 1940 and 1980, we had about five to 7,000 prisoners in Pennsylvania at a given time. It fluctuated between five to 7,000. 1980, war on drugs, uh, just, you know, just say no, get tough on crime, all these things. And our uh, system jumped from five to 7,000 prisoners to about 55,000 prisoners. Wow. A huge increase, sure. which necessitated the building of 20 some new prisons at a cost of about 500 million each to build plus about 50 million each to run each year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we passed some criminal justice reforms even before this. Prior to those, however, we were systemically spitting out about 2,000 net more prisoners per year, which necessitated a new prison every year till the end of time. Uh, meanwhile, statistically, we're not any safer th than we were when we had a tenth as many prisoners. Right. Um, and we're not any safer than other states uh, that are demographically similar to ours that don't have uh, the same incarceration philosophy that we do. We incarcerate more people than almost anywhere else in the world in Pennsylvania. So one of the things my bill will do is greatly reduce that. Um, not only do we stop charging people um, and arresting them for marijuana related, related offenses, except for things like DUI, which is separate. Right. Um, but we also uh, have uh, in the bill, as part of our social justice component to that, an automatic expungement provision. So people who have, you know, possession or delivery of small amounts or whatever, pending, pending charges, but, but even in the past uh, are going to be expunged. They're going to be cleaned up. Why is that important if you've already either served your time or paid your fines, whatever it is? Because in Pennsylvania, there's certain jobs you can't get uh, at all and jobs in schools or jobs in hospitals. Not only that, every time you apply for any type of job, there's a box often that says, have you been convicted of a criminal offense? And you have to check the box. And that often ends the interview process, right? So um, it, it holds people back. It, it holds them back from getting scholarships or getting admitted to school or getting jobs. And so we, we release those shackles from the people of Pennsylvania as well. So it'll reduce prison population, reduce the costs that we, we, that we incur uh, with this war on drugs, um, and it'll, you know, uh, give people an opportunity to be more productive, earn more, more, more of a living as they go forward, uh, have a broader range of options. So it's going to be just really helpful in a whole variety of ways in the criminal justice system. Yeah, and hopefully for any crime that's related to marijuana, that would affect that positively as well. Well, absolutely. Now, keep in mind, we want to be clear. If you rob a bank yeah. and you have some weed on you, you still have to serve the sentence for robbing the bank, sure. okay? <laughs> We're not expunging that. 
Um, but you know, we have we have spent far too much time and money. And if you know the history of this, um, this all goes back to a Pennsylvanian named Harry Anslinger uh, in the 30s, who was head of the Drug Enforcement uh, Agency back then, and was like this true believer on the evils of marijuana. And uh, also, uh, you know, this was supported by people who had economic interests, uh, like the DuPonts and the Hearsts, who were, you know, there was competition. They didn't like hemp competing with the it's a long story, but with, with what they were growing to make their newspapers and stuff. So opportunistically, they demonized cannabis. But people should know, cannabis became illegal essentially under the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. <clears throat> Harry Anslinger testified to Congress they needed to pass this. He didn't say it's bad for you. What he said was, people who smoke marijuana, it makes black people think they're just as good as white people. And it makes white women want to have sexual relationships with black men. That's why we should ban this. And of course, the Southern senators back then were like, oh my God, and they couldn't wait to, you know. Uh, but that this is a policy that was born of racism. And John Ehrlichman, who was Richard Nixon's uh, uh, deputy chief of staff, before he died, he gave an interview and said, well, we really pushed for hard penalties for marijuana because it was a way to control minority communities. Th so it was, a, it was born of racism. It was steeped in racism. Um, and sustained by racism, and it's disproportionately affected uh, communities of color from the beginning. If you're black, even though black and white people have the same rate of cannabis use, you're four times as likely to be arrested. In Pennsylvania, some states it's eight times as likely if you're black than if you're white. And if you are arrested, you're five times as likely to be incarcerated for the same offense. So this is a horrible policy from just a societal racial perspective. So one of the things we try to do is ameliorate some of that and give back some to those communities mm -hmm. that have suffered under prohibition. The expungement is a big part of that, but also things that make it easier for people who don't have a lot of money. We needed to have a lot of barriers to entry on the medical side. When you're dealing with medicine, there's a bunch of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the on the adult use side, the barriers to entry are lower. People who don't have a lot of money can get involved, what we call micro licenses to get involved in the industry. Uh, and if they're good, grow and become a bigger part of the industry. Um, we put a lot of money into training people who are interested in getting involved in the industry. Um, and so we want to give back to those communities that have been hurt by this. So the, in a wide variety of ways, this will benefit so many people. Excellent. You guys are taking some excellent initiatives with that, too. Please leave your comments in the chat if you have any questions for the senator. We'd be happy to cover them because we are live streaming this. I'm curious about what the public perception has been so far regarding this bill. Well, it's interesting. You know, the support for full legalization in Pennsylvania in the last 30 years has gone from 12% to about 60%. Um, most of the polls now are 59, 60, 61%. Franklin Marshall poll, Pew poll. Um, there was a recent national poll that had a 67% support for legalization. And that's only going to continue to grow because there is no intellectual foundation for this there it is not sustainable morally intellectually financially or any other way you know some people when i get online and i argue with people which um good. yeah my wife says i should do less <laughs> um uh but that's a long list of things i should do less um but she but you know when i get on they're like well yeah but like uh you know what about uh you know this isn't good for kids and this or, or something and like every argument, every argument they make, every single one of them, if they actually believe them, would require us to reinstate prohibition on alcohol. Because drinking a whole lot of vodka isn't good for a nine-year-old either, right? Um, and uh, driving, far worse on, 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 I don't want anyone intoxicated anyway when they're driving, but uh, alcohol statistically is just far worse. The old joke is, you know, someone who's drunk runs a red light, or uh, runs a stop sign, and someone who's high waits for the stop sign to turn green. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's true. Uh, but, uh, you know, look, it, it is um, in terms of behavior, in terms of addiction, in terms of, um, you know, leth lethality. People die all the time by drinking too much. Mm -hmm. One time. They just drink too much one night and they die. A lot of famous people have done that. You can't do that under cannabis. I mean, cannabis, does. you, you can smoke for, for hours and hours and hours. You may have a... Uh, bad experience, right. but you're n you're not going to die because it doesn't suppress your breathing because there's no there are no 
endocannabinoid receptors in the medulla. Now that's see what I, I say? See, see how I said that? Um, I have no idea what that means. But essentially, <laughs> the way things kill you uh, in overdoses is they suppress your breathing. Okay. But cannabis can't suppress your breathing. Um, so um, for every single reason, if you, if, you know, if you really believe that we should maintain prohibition on cannabis, there's no distinction. But there, there is no distinction that benefits you between cannabis and alcohol. And then we hear, well, one, one intoxicant is enough. I don't know where that's written. Uh, I don't know like what that means. Mm -hmm. Frankly, if, if cannabis results in people using less alcohol, I think that's a net benefit to people. Um, but that's not an argument to keep people. In, and, and you know, the, the whole argument that it's not good for you or whatever is not an argument to make something part of the criminal justice system. The criminal justice system, in my view, is for people who hit other people over the head and take their stuff, okay? Like predatory people, you know, whatever. Lifestyle choices should not be criminal justice system issues anyway. Um, and if cannabis isn't good for you, you know, again, neither is alcohol, neither are cigarettes. Cannabis will never be the problem. C cigarettes kill 1,100 Americans a day in really bad deaths, lung cancer, emphysema, heart disease. Sure. That will never happen with cannabis. Alcohol, uh, with, cannabis will never be the problem alcohol is. So there, there is no, um, there's no logic behind prohibition. A lot of it is just old sort of um, myths that were perpetrated many years ago that people haven't revisited. Many people I meet with and we go through the evidence, once they revisit these myths, the same thing was true in medical. They're like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. And so that's my job is to go out and make sure people understand that these myths are, should not be the basis of social policy. I hope that was a long-winded enough answer for you. <laughs> well, I'm taking it all in and certainly telling. <laughs> and I'm spewing it all out. So it's, we have a symbiotic Feel relationship. Free. Feel free. It's really an interesting topic. And I read something about something called a citizen co-sponsorship that seemed to be gaining a lot of attention. <clears throat> can, can you tell me what that is, what the difference between that and a petition is, and what that means for the bill? Well, you know, it was an idea we came up with um, because when you put out a bill, typically you ask for co-sponsorships from your colleagues. You okay. say, I'm introducing this bill. Here's what it does. Please get to my website if you want to sign up. Anyway, uh, the problem is politicians by nature are timid creatures um, often. And I have a weird genetic mutation, but most, most people are timid and most people are much less, you know, much more focused on protecting themselves than I have been. Sure. But, um, it, you know, I, I always think the fun is in the controversial issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I was introduced to the first gay marriage bill, uh, the only one in Pennsylvania history at the time. Uh, you know, right now I'm dealing with, uh, I introduced a bill eliminating the, some of the exemptions on vaccines. Man, of all the issues, guns, abortion, taxes, gay rights, whatever it is, the angriest hate mail I get is on vaccines. Really? Oh, by far. So, but, uh, but like, if there's an issue that people are, that there's a lot of senators who are interested, I'm like, that, that's handled. If there's something that no one wants to take on, I see that as my role. Mm -hmm. And if I ever lose an election because of it, then I, you know, that's fine. I'm gonna give a little advice to anyone who wants to run for office. Um, when I first ran, when I first run, won my house seat in 2002 for the first time, I sat down and had a conversation with myself. I did it in the mall, which was probably a mistake in retrospect. But anyway, and I uh, came up with the, you know, like I, I imagined what it would be like to lose an election someday. And, you know, you get competitive or whatever, but the sun comes up the next morning. Eventually, I would get another job that probably paid more and I'd see my family more often. So I'm like, I can live with that. And once you lose your fear of losing an election, it is amazingly liberating. Like you can actually do things, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, that's what we're trying to do on this. So with the citizen thing, I eventually do get to the answer, I'm told. So the citizen thing is, uh, you know, we knew we weren't going to get a lot of co-sponsors. I did have a, a because of the topic, because of the topic. Uh, 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 I did have a number of people on both sides come up to me and say, I support your bill. I hope it passes. Obviously, I can't vote for it. And I'll have to issue a press release condemning you for introducing it. No but I'm with you here, um, which was very comforting to me. Uh, so anyway, I knew that was good. So I, but I wanted it to look like, I wanted people to get the sense that there was real support out there. So we put out this idea, if you support this, sign up as a citizen co-sponsor, and there's my website, you can go to do that. Um, and someone in the Senate media room said, you know, 
other people have tried to get people to sign up as things like this in the past. They usually only get like 15 or 30. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not something people are motivated to do. Uh, but within like three or four days, we had over 7,000. Wow. Um, and it was awesome. And including almost every major cannabis organization mm -hmm. uh, and, and many other organizations as well. So we've shown there's real support for this bill. Uh, the governor, the attorney general, others have now come out in favor of the concept of legalization. Okay. Um, and I think in the legislature, if it was a secret ballot, it would pass today. The, the problem is it's not a secret ballot. So one of the things we have to do, and I've had to do this on other issues, including the medical bill, is we have to provide a le level of comfort for some of my some of my colleagues, which includes polling, which includes uh, you know meeting with them, which includes hearings, and eventually once they get the feeling that this is not a fatal thing to do, many of them will come around because, look, there are liberals and conservatives. Let's just be simplistic. Most liberals are for this, not all, but most. There are, in my analysis, three types of conservatives. There's economic conservatives, and they should absolutely be for this. This is a huge way of a lot of people making a lot of money and getting a lot of jobs. Um, there are libertarian conservatives who are like, don't want the government, or government as they call it, um, uh, uh, interfering with their lives. Well, they got to be for this. The only ones who are not sort of intrinsically are social conservatives who sort of live in terror that someone's having fun somewhere. But, um, I, you know, they're not the majority of even the Republican the Party. Yeah, and, and there's, again, see, the thing is, one of the, one of the things I have to do is unpack preconceived notions. Like, a lot of people, when they think of cannabis, because they haven't really rethought it since they first heard things, you know? They think of the hippies, and they think of the 60s, and, you know, uh, uh, Jerry Garcia, and, like, all that. The average cannabis user does not look like Jerry Garcia anymore. They, they look more like Dick Cheney, okay? Uh, I mean, this is a mainstream thing that, you know, and it's not, it doesn't, it shouldn't be tied up in like cultural war issues. Right. Uh, those are still issues we have to fight out in some sense, but cannabis is not, it can, it's, it's a plant. It doesn't really care what your ideology is or what your history is. Um, it just helps people, uh, you know, some people, some people don't like it. Some people, it makes them feel better, helps them relax. They come home just like some people have a martini or a beer after work or while they're watching the football game. Some people have a couple of hits off of a vape pen, same thing. And so we just have to, you know, destigmatize it. And number one, destigmatize. And number two, uh, make it less scary politically. Yeah. And then it'll pass. There will not be prohibition anywhere in this country in 20 years. My You're job. Those stigmas. We've already seen red change. states, blue states are passing this in referendum. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind, Pennsylvania doesn't have a referendum law, so we have to do it through the legislature. Okay. But we've seen states starting to do it through the legislature as well. Uh, Illinois just did it uh, through the legislature. Um, and they're a very demographically similar state to Pennsylvania. So this will happen. My job is to make sure it happens the right way and to make sure it happens sooner because every day that it's that we have prohibition is an injustice it's a day where people are suffering needlessly and that we are spending resources on things we shouldn't be spending them on well we are kind of in the perfect town to talk about issues like this and i imagine the youth is you're, you're getting some support from them would you be interested in hopping up take a little walk around town and see if we can maybe get some opinions from the street sure i, I anytime i can hop i am all on board. So yeah. let's, 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 I'd be happy to do that. I think it'd be a perfect way to talk about some other issues like, um, uh, whether it's home grow, we're going to be sold in lounges or mm -hmm. things like that, because we do have such a pop in town with bars, restaurants, and all poppin'. kinds of fun stuff. Popping. We are popping. <laughs> are we going to pop now? I don't know. Paul, are we going to pop now? We're going to okay. pop in 20 seconds. And all we're going to be dealing with is this little camera here. Okay, that's fine. It's amazing now. Hey, we, can, we can use a hidden camera and ask people, like, you know, highly personal questions about their right. we will criminal records. And, so yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, that's what people want to see. And look, we've got our staff helping us here. Should we stand? Do you want to stand up? All right, Paul, directing us. Go ahead and take your microphone Did off. you switch to this camera? Do, I, Sorry, do I need the microphone? Now? No. Okay. No, you're awesome. done with just the microphone and 
and we're on social media live. So this is a great shot, by the way. I think people. They're not seeing. That. This Don't is going worry. viral. This they're is. not seeing that. This is the camera that we're addressing at this point. And what we're going to do is get our coats on because it's freezing. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take a little bit of a walk around town, continue the conversation, and see if anybody will talk to us. Yeah. So let's My hope we see some friendly faces no, out there. But that's only me personally. You're going to have to guide me through this because normally, you know, we don't always stop people on the streets. They well, look at that. us funny. I, no, I, I stop people on the street all the time. Okay. And I make mean, the sure... restraining orders expired, so we're fine. <laughs> make sure that none of these boxes are seen, Paul. Hold this for me while I jack it up. And don't worry, they don't always see us impromptu popping up, gearing up, and walking out the door. So. Okay. The audience is used to this kind of um, shenanigans. Cinema verite. What does that mean? That means shenanigans. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right, so I'll follow or lead or. You can follow I. me, sir. All right, we'll go this way. All right, so we are going to be walking around town. Now, am I going to ask questions or am I going to. Well, well, we can start by. You want to ask a question? I have a few more questions for you that okay, we can, can that. initially continue talking about. But as we find um, some people, maybe. Oh, looks like Zach's going to help us. Yeah, These, they're so close, they almost look like plants. I know, they really do. Anyway. So we were just talking about this in the studio, how we are in an urbanized town mm -hmm. and we've got tons of bars, tons of restaurants here. And we're going to hit all of them. What would that look like if this bill were to pass for a town like Westchester? Well, one of our, we have a number of guiding principles and values that we wanted to incorporate in the bill. One of the key um, principles is no stigmatization. We should treat cannabis it's an intoxicant, so should we treat it like other intoxicants? But like, there have to be regulations. There have to be regulations, but it'd be no no worse than alcohol. So, for example, you know, there, some states have these laws that have you can't have a cannabis dispensary within 500 feet of a church. Okay. Because apparently, wow. pe people can't pray if they know there's a cannabis. That's just one of those things. Yeah, it's crazy. So we're, we're we're none of that. Okay, like you can sell, you can have a CVS in a church and sell opioids, and that's fine. Okay, but cannabis, which by the way is reducing opioids in Pennsylvania and around the country by 25% opioid overdoses um, that you can't sell. So um, it, it's, um, you know, that is wrong. So one of the things we're going to do is treat it like alcohol in a lot of ways. One of the ways is as we walk through lovely Westchester, we're passing, look, there's a, something called the public house right here. That's a bar. Yes. You can go in there and drink alcohol. That would be the perfect place. Perfect place to go drink alcohol. So we're going to have, one of the things we have is cannabis lounges that you can go, you get licensed, you can go and consume cannabis uh, in, a, in a place that, you know, probably sells snacks as well and whatever, uh, because that's, you know, what, what we, how we treat alcohol, so what we, how we should treat cannabis. And it gives people a lot of opportunity, again, to open new businesses where they'll employ people and pay taxes and all of that. Sure. Will any bar that's already existing be able to uh, acquire a license just like they would a liquor license? Yeah, but they'd have to. You'd have, they'd have to acquire it the same way as anyone else. So there'll be some liquor, there'll be some bars that sell alcohol that also sell cannabis. Sure. Uh, there'll be some, have, let you use cannabis. There'll be some places that are only cannabis. And that's, the, that's what the free market will decide. Yeah, and with that, um, will people, there's another topic that I wanted to cover is, will people be able to do this at home? What will the regulations be with that? Are we worried about people doing it at home? Is there a process that they should be going through? Is that even legal with this bill? You mean, you mean to grow it at home or to use it? To grow it at home. To grow it at home, yeah. We have uh, in the bill, we have something called a home grow provision, yes. which allows you to, you have to register, and you can grow up to 10 plants at a time. You can't sell them. It's like craft beer. You can have friends over to drink your beer or to, to smoke your cannabis, um, but you can't sell it to anyone else because it's not been tested. It's not... So we, when it goes to the market, we want to make sure people are getting a safe product. Sure. But if you want to just use it in your own basement or whatever it is, that's fine. Up to 10 plants you can do. Oh, at home. That's at really home. interesting. Do we have a taker over here? Yeah. We've got somebody from the youth of Westchester that's willing to comment yeah. on this bill that's passed. When I lived in Lehigh County, it was the Ute. The Ute? It's the, the Ute. government and the Ute? The government and the Ute. If you don't mind. 
Who are we speaking to here? My name is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Are you a college student? Um, not right now. I'm taking a break, but I do live in the borough. Oh, okay. Now, we're talking about uh, a bill that would legalize recreational cannabis. Uh, do you, or adult use as we call it, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, personally, I think recreational use should be legal. Um, as somebody who suffers from extreme anxiety, uh, I smoke every day to help me okay. kind of calm down, get to a very peaceful, mindful state, helps me sleep at night. Uh, aside from just the fun of it, it definitely helps me every day to kind of overcome what I have to and, do. And do you worry now that uh, at some point you may be caught with it or arrested or, you know, that it could, it could mess with your life? doing that definitely i try to keep my marijuana at home um <laughs> where nobody can see it uh is your mom watching this interview i just I actually don't... my oh, dad might be watching it but he is a medical marijuana user Good and so he definitely endorses it and loves it as well helps him a lot is also. he in the state yeah he's in pa now one of the things that people say uh, and i'm i'm the author of the bill on this so i'm with you yeah. but one of the things that people on the other side of the issue say is oh well you know what about dui what about people that are going to be driving? They're going to be. Do you think that's going to be a, a bigger problem than it is now? Um, I don't know if it's going to be a bigger problem. I actually read an article recently that some, uh, I forget which university it was, but somebody had been doing studies about being able to test um, marijuana usage in drivers. Um, and it would have almost an immediate effect, kind of like, uh, you know, breathalyzer. So that actually would help with regulation and help holding people accountable for their actions, responsibility. Um, so... I mean, it might be an issue, but I think people are working on regulating it and therefore keeping it safe for everybody to use. Apparently this guy is. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I have one more question for you on this issue, um, which is that uh, do you think uh, one of the big issues other states have been wrestling with as they've legalized is the uh, you know, legal market versus the black market? Right. Um, if it were legal... Would you buy it through the legal market, or would you stay with the black market, or and what would help you decide that? Absolutely. I would definitely keep it legal in that, especially with the rise of uh, cartridges being unsafe for people my age. I know a lot of people that smoke cartridges. Um, if it was available in dispensaries, I absolutely would keep it legal, just to make sure that I'm staying safe and uh, smoking what I know I'm buying. So, definitely. All right, good. Do you have any questions? No. Keep right, up well, the good you. work. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> have a great day. Have a good day. Nice to meet you. Thank you. That was really telling. She was really good. That was awesome. No, that's... Uh, let's get someone who looks like they may not be for it. I don't know if we can find someone like Hey, that. you run the risk of them saying they don't support it. That's fine. That's fine. Because I'd like to hear why. Like, uh, you know, it, and I think it's valuable for people who are on the fence or haven't really thought about the issue to know why, like to hear the arguments on the other side. I think that's good from my perspective because I can easily rebut them, I believe, A, because I've studied the issue a lot, and because I'm a genius. Those two things, those two things. Um, well, you together, heard it here, folks. They, they, it's symbiotic, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, we, we, you know, but other than, by the way, the cannabis lounges, uh, we're also going to have other things to make it user-friendly. We uh, legalize delivery services. So, for example, you could, like, like, like you can order a pizza, you can call up a cannabis dispensary, you have to show ID. Can you imagine insomnia cookies <laughs> yeah. having their own branch? Yes, they yes. They deliver In cookies at 3 a.m. to college students. <clears throat> yeah, no, and you might, there may, again, there may be a symbiosis between, you know, ordering cannabis and ordering pizza. They may, you know, there may be a lot of that. Sure. Uh, going on at the same time. But uh, that's fine. It, every you know the pizza shops do better. Everyone was, does better. By was, the way, this is our justice system. Is this, is this your courthouse? This is the old courthouse. Okay. So we do have a new uh, justice center down the street. What are they doing with this building now? I don't even know to be honest. But a lot of people have been sentenced for cannabis-related offenses here. Absolutely. And that is a shame. Because that's not what we should, we should be using our criminal justice resources for. Um, actually brought up the... You want to cross the street, guys? Well, Zach is... Yep, uh, Zach's over there. He yeah. needs us. Let's let's head over. We're going to head over. Let's wait until the... Are we good? One thing when you're streaming live and walking, you got to make sure you don't get crushed by a car. 
Yeah, although that is good TV. I mean, that would get that would get some. You it's, know. it's almost happened before. Yeah. <laughs> that would go viral. Yeah, we wanted to talk. Uh, I wanted to touch on what Ashley mentioned with the cartridges, with the issues of people getting sick smoking them now. Yeah. I well, think we. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say first of all, we uh, th- none of that has happened on reputable cannabis. Like, if you go to a reputable uh, dispensary. Um, and, you know, we have not seen that. What we've seen that is, uh, A, we've seen it a lot with tobacco products. Sure. Um, and B, we've seen it from, there's still a lot of black market cartridges. And the problem when you buy with the black market is that, again, you, it's not been tested. You don't know where you're getting. And that's a, one of the major things, one of the major values we want to forward here is eliminating as much as possible the black market because A, it's not safe, and B, the black market are violent drug cartels. Um, and we don't want to fund them and we, right. w- we want them to go away and do something else for a living, like help the homeless or something. And hopefully with the Food and Drug Administration they would be able to make sure that it's safe cartridges being mm-hmm. used. For Absolutely. Yeah, I think we have another person that we're yeah. going to speak Hi there. to. What's your name? Christian. How you doing? Hey, Christian. Um, so we're uh, going around the town talking about uh, a bill, uh, it's my bill actually, to uh, legalize recreational adult use cannabis. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> okay. He seems very enthusiastic, Tess. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I think Absolutely. so, too. Without question, for so many reasons. No, well, what do you, give us a couple of the reasons, just so people listen. Well, I just heard you talking about the black market. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's 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 make it a, a real deal thing. Let's, you know, let's... let's Make it legal, you know. Make some make some money off it for the yeah. people. Tax money. Absolutely, and exactly, exactly, and take people out of prisons. So another another. Uh, all right, we we we've talked to a couple of people and we told them some of the arguments against that. And I just want to here we talked about DUI uh, and we talked about uh, you know some other things. Another argument that I hear, uh, you know, from people who email me or whatever, they're like, the whole town. If you do this, like you're going to walk down the street and everyone's going to be stoned and no one's going to be functioning <laughs> and no one's going to be able to work. Work. And like the whole commu- the, the society will collapse into like a post-apocalyptic hellscape, uh, like Denver is. Zombie world. Um, right. Yeah, double tap. So, uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think that's that's crazy. I mean, you don't see everyone walking around wasted all the time. Right. Yeah, no one's no one's walking around drunk. It's you, you, you let people do something recreational <laughs> legally. They're, they're going to handle it well. It's my opinion, at least. I mean, and some may not, but. They're already, I mean, one of the, from my perspective, one of the tragedies of prohibition is, aside from everything else, it doesn't work. It doesn't stop anyone who wants to use it. When I was in high school, it was much easier to get cannabis than alcohol. And people in high school now tell me the same thing is true. And so, like, what, what are we doing other than punishing people? We're not, it doesn't seem like we're stopping people. In fact, in some places, like Portugal and other places where they've legalized it, use has gone down. But that's the thing. You go, yeah. You look at other countries and stuff like that. Place like the Netherlands, things like that. Can't even imagine that the crime is so low. It's 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 insane. You give people, you know, the the free will to do these things. You're just cutting out crime. I mean, that's all there is to it. Well, thank you, Christian. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, talk to your legislator. Will do. <laughs> I think Andy Dinneman's office right yeah, down he's the right street. Around the corner. All right, yeah. man. Thank thanks. you, Christian. Christian works at the Market Street Grill. I oh, do know okay. that. So <laughs> it's maybe that will be a cannabis lounge. Yeah, when, uh, maybe one day that will be when it comes out. The cannabis. Lounge. Okay, I think we have another person here. Hi. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. You're welcome. What's your name? I'm Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Um, we uh, are going around talking to people about a bill that would legalize recreational cannabis or adult use cannabis in Pennsylvania. Uh, we already have medical, but this would open it up to people with non medical usage. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I think it would be good just because. Um, I mean, it would help people with disabilities and stuff. Like, I got hit by a truck last year, and so I'm still going through the pain. And, like, I used to smoke weed just for my mentality and stuff and to help with my pain and stuff. So, I mean, I think it would be a good thing. If you don't mind me asking, do you have a medical card? No. Okay. But it, you know, it pain always helps me the conditions. Sleep. Yeah, it always helped me sleep because I have insomnia, so I would smoke weed, like, about two years ago just to help me sleep but i haven't done that in a while just because it's illegal so right and do you worry about getting either arrested or busted or whatever it is i mean i used to but i mean i just i usually stayed by myself so okay and do you worry about you know people driving intoxicated more i think drinking would be worse than smoking marijuana Mm -hmm. so 
Well, thank you, Jessica. We really appreciate you talking to us. Oh, you're welcome. All right. I hope thank you, feel you better. very much. Yes, thank I do. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Are we down that way? I wonder what would, um, in your experience, hold somebody back from getting a medical card at this time? Do you think it's knowledge of the existence that we have there's that some, in Pennsylvania? Know, there are several things. Number one, some there's some knowledge issues, you know, issues of like that. Although I find the people who use cannabis are pretty hip to what the you know options are okay. uh, sometimes it's a thing of uh, you know money you have to go see a doctor you have to get a card you have to go to a dispensary right. they may have someone they've been buying it from since high school or something that right. they like and they trust and they're like why would i go through that extra step it, i wonder if there's some health insurance the benefits or issues regarding well there's currently a, a health insurance does not cover it okay um but we'll go that way that could be an issue. But, uh, but, uh, and that's one of the things we have to work on. It should cover it, especially since it saves ins- insurance companies so much money uh, from other things that, that you know, um, cost far more that people can use. But uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. And it's, we've talked to three or four people already, all of whom seem pretty, pretty open. Yes, I use it now, which, again, goes to my point that prohibition isn't actually stopping anybody. Right. All it's doing is making them anxious. It's making them buy products they don't know about. Uh, it's funding uh, uh, violent drug cartels. And, you know, what good is it doing anybody? Where are we going? They're taking us down into the I, know, I think this is where Joe Pesci gets whacked in oh most of the movies. Oh, my goodness, you know? yes. I want to be out uh, in the sunlight. But, you know, we, we can, you, want, you want to ask this gentleman? Are you, are you the second? Here we are. Just a quick opinion question for you. We, I know you're working. Well, we're talking about legalizing recreational cannabis. Do you have an opinion on that? To be honest, no. All right, that's fine. <laughs> but no, we, have, we, we. Do you worry about if it's legalized, people will be driving intoxicated or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, I do. But I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It's I don't know. I, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you we for. Put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, we didn't mean to put you on the spot I, or interrupt your job. Mm-hmm. But uh, but thank you for talking no to us. All right, man. Talk to you. Some college students coming up right here. Okay. All right, so we are approaching a few people to see. It's really interesting to get just the general consensus of just the people of our town. So it's really a, a telling experience today. This is what happens when it's live. This is how you know it's live. Oh, we've had much worse than just somebody now, not agreeing or saying maybe something. Maybe one of the most popular bars in Westchester. Barnaby's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Especially so with the young college kids. Like oh, is it open now? I think people drinking at 1030 in the morning would be excellent people to talk to. <laughs> um, Are you guys going to try and cross illegally? Okay. All right, All right, so we're stepping aside. We're, we're going to get permission. We're going to go over there as soon as the traffic clears. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, it, it, it is. Um, and again, when I say that there are other businesses, you know, we could have all kinds of businesses here in Westchester, you know, for, for every aspect of this. Um, lighting. Uh, I went to a store that did nothing but lighting for cannabis, you know. Uh, or, oh, like heat lamps? Yeah, like there's different guys. There's also these wind machines. Apparently, you're supposed to stress the plants a little bit, but not too much. Sure. So there's there's supposed to be wind. This these are indoor grows, you know. So they're supposed to create wind certain times a day and then turn it off certain times. That helps the plants grow better. Um, so like all those things are people things Did people can invest in. All right. We're walking into a bar, folks. No. Okay. Nope. We're, oh, we got a guy. Okay. Uh, no. Oh, I just saw you driving, yeah. calling out the window. Sit down. Hi. Hi, sir. Hi, dear right. Hey, how you doing? How you guys doing? Good. What's your name? Jason. Jason. Uh, I'm Dalen. This is Tess. We're just hey, um, guys. we're interviewing people about there's a, a bill to legalize recreational cannabis. Do you have any uh, uh, opinion on that? I do. I do. So, if you were to ask me five, six, maybe ten years ago, yeah, legalize it. Legalize it. Um, I'm not going to say that I, I do or don't participate in that as a business owner in Westchester. Um, but I will say this. Um, my brother, who's a year apart from me, he's a year younger, lives um, where, somewhere where it is uh, recreational legally. And uh, he has children as I do. And the things I didn't think about with it being legal is um, things like 
you can smell it everywhere you go when it's legal. He takes his kids to the park, I see that. they smell it, and he has to explain to them what it is. The other things are um, where it's legal, he goes to Rite Aid or CVS or somewhere to buy something. <laughs> and the person behind the counter is obviously stoned. And it makes the whole transaction that much more difficult. So, Sorry. That is interesting. It is. And it's, it was interesting to me because I never looked at it in that light before. And um, it was really, and a couple other things that came up, and it was almost as, you know, as if decriminalizing it was better than legalizing it. With it decriminalized, you still can't do it on the streets. You can't sell, can't, anybody can't just go get it. It's out there, but the legality of the penalties behind it are a lot lower. So, uh, that's it's, an interesting. It is, and it's something I never thought of. And so, when I saw you guys doing the interview on it, I just wanted to voice that because it's something I never thought of before. I don't want to have to smell it everywhere I go. There are times where I like the smell of it, you know, but walking on the street with my kids, yeah. it's nothing I want to do. Let me ask you this Would you be more comfortable if it was legal, but you couldn't do it on the street? You had right. to... Yeah, exactly. But almost de decriminalized. Well, except that you know, the problem with decriminalizing, I'm just, uh, you know. Which you would know better than me. I'm not a legal Ooh. expert. I'm guessing you are. I'm not an expert on anything. <laughs> but I will, but just to give you the pushback that you get, the, if you decriminalize it, it's legal to have, but it's not legal to buy. Okay. So you'd still have to buy it from a criminal. Uh, not so, knowing what you're getting. Not knowing what you're getting from the black market. No tax dollars go to the, to the state. And it funds, you know, drug cartels, which is who sells it now. Yeah, which is not is there Is there a lesser um, set of regulations that we can put on it that allows a legal system, but like alcohol, like... We're in front of Barnaby's, um, a, a bar. It's a great place. Great place. You guys never been to Barnaby's. Um, it's great. But, but you can't, there's an open container law. You can't walk out of Barnaby's carrying a beer. Right. An open beer, right? And so if it was, the, and people aren't supposed to at least be drinking, walking around the streets, you know. If it was the same protocol with cannabis, like this was a cannabis lounge instead of a bar, and people could smoke in there, um, but they couldn't smoke it on the streets, would that... Help yeah, you. no, I, I definitely think, um, yeah, right, exactly. I'm sure there's ways around it, just like um, I'm sure they'll figure that out as soon as they figure out health care out. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there's, you know, ways yeah. to make it, you know, to find that equilibrium where everybody's yeah. I mean, okay that still would it. solve the problem of your friend behind the counter. Or but, somebody, uh, yeah. But, um, I, I mean, your friend behind the counter might be stone now right exactly yeah exactly. Uh, but anyway no that's interesting i really appreciate yeah. your perspective no, no worries guys I just want to give that to you thank you look at everything What's the dog's name? river river uh, it's river. usually a lot better than oh he's saying, you river's know. excited by the camera you guys ever want to throw axes come down to tilted axes in westchester cool. what is it tilted axes okay. we will have to we're stream geeks down yeah. there oh yeah we got to do a team building or something yeah fine okay. yep find us wow. online well, that was a great little that chat. Cool. Have you ever thrown axes test? You seem like a, an axe thrower to me. No, I've oh. never done that, but we have talked about that specific place in town going to do that as a team. So. Yeah, no, that sounds like a good, you know, bonding experience. Well, it was good to chat with him to yeah. kind of hear some of the possible concerns that might be regarding this. And, and what I would say, I mean, I think once you talk, he's a great example. Yeah. People have concerns. Once you talk them through a little bit and say, well, maybe this is a way to, like there's, in most of the, and some of the concerns are legitimate. I'm not trying to say that these are not legitimate concerns. Sure. What I'm saying is there's, I think there are ways to address it short of arresting people and putting them in jail. Right. You know, uh, or, or, you know, getting them kicked out of school or whatever it is. So uh, that, uh, that's what I'm saying. And, and a lot of people have concerns. Uh, and so let's talk through them and see if there's a way we can do it that is a lot less intrusive in people's lives and allows us to have, you know, an industry and a tax base uh, that's expanded without causing the sort of problems. Now, the guy behind the counter at the Rite Aid who's stoned and can't count your change, yeah. you know, yeah, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a, it's a problem now. Right. And, and like with alcohol, you know, I've... Uh, <laughs> You know, there was, there was a story like a week or two ago about an airline pilot who showed up completely drunk, okay, mm -hmm. which we like to discourage. Uh, so, yeah, like, there's always going to be, yeah, there's always going to be, you know, uh, people, like, when you're dealing with human beings, you're always going to deal with, you know, sure. not everyone behaves perfectly all the time. But I feel like the answer to that is not, you know, making things a crime not creating a whole prison industrial complex 
it's having a set of reasonable policies that address these issues as, as a, in a more appropriate way. And there are still things that will be illegal, like the airline pilot who showed up for drunk, for a drunk he was fired and he's being prosecuted, and as he should be. And, and this is just statewide, right? And it's not segmented. The, the rules would be the same statewide. Yeah, the, the rules would be uh, the same statewide. Uh, local municipalities would be able to enact certain types of ordinances. Okay. And you would still have to go through things like local zoning. So, you know, if, if, it's, if you want to open a commercial establishment, it has to be in a commercially zoned area. You can't open it up in the middle of a residential neighborhood, for example. And that's all legitimate, too. Um, you know, we, we, we like to think of ourselves as reasonable people, Tess. Right. And here's another bar. Man, you guys are just drinkers here, aren't well, you? Well, this town would really just be prime for the taking yeah. if this sort of bill were to pass. Yeah, well, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, it's a real quaint little town. You'd have all kinds of nice stuff here. Wait, what town are you from exactly, if you don't mind sharing? Where, where, what town do I live in? Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, I live in, well, it's technically... It's called Wayne, but oh. Wayne's actually just a post office box. It's I'm in Upper Marion, right near the King of Prussia Mall. Okay, yep, not far from here. Yes, and apparently people come from all over the country. They take take their vacations at the King of Prussia Mall, which always amazed me. Yeah, well, it's one of the biggest malls in America. Yeah, right? they're building a new one in the Meadowlands with an amusement park and a skating rink and all that. It's going to be the apparently the biggest. What kinds of jobs, I wonder, would become available? Well, I'll give you a whole, there's a whole bunch. I mean, first of all, in terms of jobs, because I've toured many dispensaries, mm -hmm. my friend uh, owns a, a big dispensary, Terra Vida, uh, and she's very successful in Pennsylvania. And she now, she has three locations plus offices to oversee things. She employs 145 people, I think, now, um, in all different things, for everything, like normal jobs, everything from accounting uh, to bud tenders who are like experts at... Bud tenders? Bud tenders who are Never experts at guiding people, like, I want to feel this, or I, I have pain, or I have spasticity, or I have whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what you want to try this. There's different strains that do different things. Mm -hmm. um, but they have, you know, marketers, they have an advertising team, they have, you know, just like any other business. Now, in a, in a, if this was a cannabis lounge, again, you'd have, uh, you know, people... Uh, we, you, you have people who, you know, make food, people who, you know, cashiers, uh, uh, everything in and and grow houses. You have botanists, mm -hmm. uh, which are very high paying jobs. If you're really good at growing things, that actually can make a lot of money. Um, and you have processors and you have extractors and chemists, everything. Sure. Hi, guys. We've got a few Hi. other people that we're going to chat with. You just want to so, hop over here. Yeah. So let me ask you, what's your names? Katie. Katie and Mick. Mick. Okay. Um, we are interviewing people about uh, a bill to legalize uh, uh, adult use or recreational well, re recreational cannabis in Pennsylvania. Um, first of all, do you have any general thoughts on that? I, I support it. I 100% I support it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, one of the things in the bill, uh, it would create cannabis lounges where people could go like a bar and, and instead of drinking, they could use cannabis, right? And uh, some would be pre-existing bars and some would be standalone places like coffee shops type of thing and you can serve food and everything like that um, if that was legal tomorrow would you be interested in taking ram's head uh, and uh, uh, applying in addition to your liquor license applying for a cannabis uh, lounge license I think it's definitely a business opportunity that we should look into yeah I mean it's <laughs> definitely not my choice and but if, if it, I would. You, you, you don't own Rams. Head. No, no, no. no. <laughs> You're not like Mrs. Ram. Okay. I am not Mrs. Ram. <laughs> okay, but 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 you, you but you, you you could see, uh, you work here, so you could see having a cannabis lounge where people maybe in a section of it that's uh, so p the smoke doesn't bother people who are not interested in that. Um, that would be something that you would be comfortable working in. I'm gonna be really honest. Yeah, yeah. If that's okay. Well, like, we used to be able to have smoking in our basement downstairs, but we did stop that just because of like the use of smoke in general, not because of what it is, but just some people don't want to be around. Which like would be the one thing that, yeah. cause, again, it's something that if there was like smoke only, I would be interested. But I don't think that that's something that would um, be comfortable with every all the clientele. Mm -hmm. If you get what I'm saying there. Mick. An area. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be a one or the other kind of thing. I think trying to mix it be hard, uh, especially because it's two different crowds of people. 
That's yeah. interesting. There's people who like like to be around smoke and others that just don't, which is the reason why, I mean, cigarettes aren't... Yeah, I feel like cigarettes are d- different. Yeah. I mean, they're, to- they're totally different, but... And, like, like, I would definitely be... You'd catch me in one of those <laughs> lounges somewhere, but I don't know if it should be in a place where it's mixed with the clientele. Interesting. Mostly because we also have like families here and stuff too. So. Sure. sure. Yeah. Well, anyway, we really appreciate. It. Do you have any questions or no? no. Anything else? <laughs> good luck. All right. Thank good, you. Good, good. Thank you for your time. Say hi to Ram for me. I will. I'll, I'll All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah. I need to be on the sunlight, uh, the sunlit part. Okay, so. wait, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Our cameraman is throwing himself in front of vehicles. So if we've gone all the way to here, then we'll go down this street, then on Gay Street, and we're back at the office. Okay, awesome. And we'll try to find more uh, more. more victims. Ah. I'm trying to find think of the type of place that would get us a certain type of person. Well, we've had a few different views that were interesting. We, we have. Older, Somebody who... Uh, like an older person. We haven't talked to too many older people. Oh, no. That's, that seems town, risky. <laughs> no, but that's good. And there is a demographic divide. Although I will tell you, on the medical side now, when I speak to senior centers, usually, you know, they would ask, in the past they would ask me like about the, the bus free buses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now I frequently get like, where can I get my marijuana? You know, God, from, I just noticed. Look at this. What? Look at this sticker. What did it say? It says the Mary Jane Experience, a cannabis podcast. Oh, look at that. We didn't even plant that. Wow. Perfect. Oh, well, we should have. Some people that, must be... Uh, that was an oversight on our part. Some people must be in podcasting. I wonder what they're chatting about. <laughs> but, uh, Probably this bill. Now, what about... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, Zach, what about Parisian cleaners and tailors? Oh, that doesn't sound like a terribly you young and hip crowd. You want to be challenged. Crowd. I want to be challenged. I want, to, I want this to get physical. I want someone to come at me. Well, that last conversation was an interesting take on it because they, they uh, alluded to the fact that they might be users... But the thought of a smoking lounge and a bar would well, maybe and, and I challenges. think they make a legitimate point. I mean, it's a different crowd, just like a you know a, a bar that has Grateful Dead cover bands probably is a different crowd than a sports bar. Sure, that's the great thing about America. You like people have different interests, different tastes. We just want to create opportunities for everybody. Not every bar might be interested. No, not but at all. Sunlight. One of those sort of old timey bars where people drink like. You know, old fashions and cosmos. Old fashions. I didn't want to offend you if that was your. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, I snort vodka, um, but uh, it's not bad, really. But the, the the point is that you know those people may be less interested in, and that's fine. We don't want every lounge to be a kind of a lounge. Okay. We are looking to chat with some hopefully local business. How about owners? the insurance guys? State Farm. Is that does Jake work there? Jake from State Farm. Yeah. Maybe that is the one that he works at. <laughs> Split rail, maybe. Oh, no, no, this is awesome. If we can get someone in here, this is a shoe repair. No one under 90 goes into a place for shoe well, repair. I know that um, if we could get into old soul decor, that would be an interesting chat. Yeah. Do you want to ask Zach? Sure. Uh, and uh, You're getting the raw behind-the-scenes action where we try and get into businesses, see yes. if they're willing to chat with us. And are told to get lost in a, a, at an alarming rate. You're uh, used to that? Oh. <laughs> okay, good. This will be a first You never for me. did political fundraising, did you? No, okay. certainly not. So, you want to ask them? Hi, would you like to uh, share your thoughts on this? Okay. Okay. Let's continue on here. Now, Sorry. I can tell you some other aspects of the bill. One of the things we're trying to do, again, I mentioned micro licenses. So a micro license yeah. would say that you could you couldn't sell, you could grow up to 150 plants. You could grow it in your house. Um, and this allows people with almost no money to get involved in the industry. Now, it's hard to grow good cannabis. And so some people will fail, which is true of every industry. But there are some people who will be talented and they grow. And, they, and what you could do, you couldn't sell it to the public because it, it, it hasn't gone through the testing. Is it for personal use? No. Uh, you can sell it to the grid, which means you can, mean? <laughs> um, you can sell it to a, to, to a dispensary, a licensed dispensary, or a licensed grower processor. Uh, and I saw this happen in California. Uh, people would bring their their product to a dispensary, or and they would say, uh, the dispensary would give them a receipt and say, we're going to test it out in whatever way they test it out. And they'll say, we're, we'll let you know if you're interested. And if they are interested, they're like, okay, we, we will buy this. And they become regular suppliers to certain dispensaries or whatever. Because certain people grow very unique strains or they're really talented at it. Mm-hmm. 
And what often happens, once, once they do that for a while, um, if they're good at it, they're bought out. Like the dispensary will say, just come work for us. Right. And, uh, you know, or else they get, they get um, steady, steady customers. And 150 plants, I mean, that, that you can make, you can make, you know, if you do that well, you can make a couple hundred thousand a year on that, just as a business in itself. So th- this will be opportunities for people who don't need to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a competitive licensing process or, you know, uh, having a whole huge warehouse. Uh, th- these are people you can, you don't have to grow 150 plants. You can start with 20 plants uh, and just build your way up. Now, I've seen Murder Mountain. Did you watch that? No. What is that? Oh, it's a documentary about the um, the marijuana industry in, in Northern California and some crazy aspects, but there was an interesting aspect about growers and legitimate growers, people who are looking to really become a big business with this, having so much red tape for attaining their We reality. cut the red tape a lot. One of the things we do, there's something called seed to sale tracking in most states where we track the plant literally from the seed to sale. Like we, Every individual plant is monitored and tracked, right? Um, and we still have that for medical, but we got rid of it. We're the first state to do this, got rid of it for... Uh, uh, adult use cannabis. And we'll tell why, why in a second. We have a couple gentlemen here. Thank you for speaking Hi. to us. Sure. Um, my name is Dalen Leach. This is Tess. We're just interviewing people uh, about uh, the, there's a bill that would legalize adult use recreational cannabis. There's already medical, but this would do be recreational. First of all, do you have any general thoughts on that? Uh, I think that I already use the cannabis and it's helped me a lot. It helps my wife because she has uh, fibromyalgia. So it's eased the pain on her, and she had a lot of trouble sleeping, like maybe getting an hour to two hours sleep every night. And uh, now once she's taken this, it's helped her sleep five hours, sometimes six. Wow. So big difference. That's so, terrific. How about you, sir? What's your name? Glenn. Glenn, and you? I think it's a good thing. Um, you, would, you would have to regulate the quality of, of, the, of right. the stuff that's sold and, and the, the, you know, the creation of it and all, but I think it's a good thing. And, uh, you know, you'd be comfortable with if there's, you know, dispensaries or whatever throughout Westchester. What about cannabis lounges or places people could go, like a bar, except they could use cannabis instead of alcohol? You'd be, would you be comfortable with that? Uh, I'm not sure if I would be that comfortable with that. I think that uh, it's, especially if it's for more medical use, then I think that, that that's something that you want to do in the privacy of your own home or whatever. I'm not that comfortable with a lot of people getting together because I think that that opens up for other things to happen. So. What are they? Can you t- <laughs> I'm well, intrigued at instance, this point. <laughs> well, for instance, it could uh, relax people enough that, that they would uh, do some things that they wouldn't necessarily do normally, and I think it would have to be a very high caliber place that looked out for the individual people, and not just true? not just trying to sell their product. Is that true of alcohol as well? Yes. It sounds like bars would have the same issue. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Do you see so a difference between bars and cannabis in terms of stuff like that? Uh, no, I don't. I'm no, not I don't. Sure. I don't do bars that much because my wife became allergic to alcohol, so she can't have any kind of alcohol. Wow. And that's in everything, your your mouthwash or whatever. So wow. So it's very difficult. To I'm not sure what effect cannabis would have on driving. And, um, well, let's assume we don't want anyone. Oh, hey, let's assume we don't want anyone. Uh, I knew him. Uh, let's assume we don't want anyone drinking or being intoxicated while driving at all. Right. Right. Um, would it comfort you if there, you know, the, the same DUI laws on alcohol were on cannabis, you know, the same punishments, etc. Is that something you think we should do? It seems to make sense. Yeah. 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 Um, are, are, do, you, do you feel optimistic or not optimistic about the economic benefits of having a whole bunch of different type of businesses, whether it's direct cannabis businesses or businesses that sell lighting or businesses that sell, you know, Packaging or marketing firms that do cannabis businesses. Do you think that would be a good economic opportunity for people in, uh, in this area? I think it would be a, would a so. good economic. I think that diversity would be very important, though, because you don't want someone to become the leading market in an area 
and squeeze out the uh, other companies. So. And that's actually a big problem that we have to talk about because one of the concerns people have is that, you know, uh, if we legalize it, then suddenly the equivalent of Budweiser comes in. Right. And they, but like, you know, other people are like, well, we could have Budweiser, but we could also have craft beers or, you know, yeah. it, it, there's, a, there's a wide range of things you can have in the market that would help, you know, that, that would help uh, everyone ac- uh, across the spectrum. So we'll have to see how it evolves, but we really appreciate you taking the time. Any last thoughts? Anything we didn't ask you? The growing of cannabis seemed like, unlike beer, it could, it could be a small scale kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. lots of small farmers in California grow it. Mm-hmm. So it seems like uh, it could be done around here too, I would think, in, in greenhouses anyway. In, in greenhouses, yeah. The, the, today it doesn't seem like the climate would be that good. But <laughs> All right, and you, you, get, you need to get a coat on. Uh, <laughs> we, we were just. We, we just did aerial yoga, yeah, we're so we're warm. warm, warm. Oh, okay. Did you really? Yeah. Have, you, have, you, have you tried goat yoga? Oh, well, oh no. Uh, goat is no. with you? Where the goat climbs on no. you when you do the I'm yoga? I'm not sure yeah. what the point of that is. I don't either. But <laughs> <laughs> Snuggle a goat Thank while you, you exercise. Thanks, guys. I think we have some more folks up here. Sure. And uh, they, look, uh, they look anxious to speak to us. <laughs> or anxious about speaking with us, one of us. Hi there, guys. Hi. Who are we talking to? Us three. And what's your name? My name's Aaron. I'm Maddie. I'm Jordan. Hi, guys. Um, so we're talking about a bill to uh, that would legalize recreational adult use cannabis in Pennsylvania. Do you guys have any general thoughts on that? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 And do you worry about, uh, you know, like one of the things we hear is people will be stoned all the time. They won't be able to do their jobs or their people will be dr- uh, intoxicated uh, while they're driving. Do you worry about anything like that? Or do you think that'll be, you know, like alcohol? There'll be some people who do things wrong. They'll be punished. But most people will handle it appropriately. Yeah, I, I feel think like, it's, like it's, yeah. it's no oh, different yeah. than alcohol. There's still, if you get caught smoking while driving, it's still a DUI. So Yeah, if so anything, it's safer, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, if you don't mind me asking, are you guys in college here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when you were in high school, for example, if you can remember back that far, <laughs> um, were was it easier to get, if you know, and I, we're not asking you to self-confess anything, but just through the grapevine, was it easier to get cannabis or alcohol in high school? For students. Um, for me, probably cannabis. Yeah, yeah. same I for me. I would say the same thing. Really? Yeah, I, I know for some people thing. it's different, but I don't know, just yeah. the people I was friends with. Yeah, that, me too. Probably but other people, people other groups probably with. with like older siblings yeah. who could get them Easily like get alcohol yeah. like that probably that went would for that easy. more. And who so, would have it? Students? Or... Uh, going too far well no other students so so you yeah. could find it in the school someone would you could if you wanted to you could probably buy some cannabis in the school whereas there may not be someone in the in the locker rooms you know saying hey i got a bottle of vodka here that, yeah. that is that yeah. what you're saying yeah. Yeah. yeah more people just would, would like carry stuff school. around yeah. in the school over definitely yeah. got it okay uh do you have any uh last thoughts or questions of us a really good idea. Yeah. Now, yeah. If there, let me ask you this. If there was a cannabis lounge that was like a bar, I don't know if you guys are 21. Are you guys 21 yet? Yeah. No. All right. So when you turn 21 and you go to a bar, right, um, they sell alcohol. And, and, and uh, But let's say there were some places that were like coffee shops that sold cannabis, like they have in Amsterdam or whatever. Would that be something you think students would be interested in? Yeah. yeah I think, I think so. I just like, I get why some people would be against it just because like my one roommate, she's like, it's going to get in my hair and my clothes and like worried about like so soaking in and like smelling like it but Wait, your, your roommate thinks people should go to jail because it'll make her hair smell like no, that. Like she just doesn't want it to be around her like okay. she doesn't want to be exposed to no. it and, and if you couldn't smoke it on the street but you could in a bar she doesn't have to go to those bars yeah no easy way to avoid but All right. or use that uh, herbal essence shampoo i'm told that like <laughs> clears it up thank you guys really thank appreciate you. it so we have to cross so the age restriction therefore are we going to die again Okay. okay. The okay. age restriction would be 21, not age about restriction, alcohol. That's another thing. It's why we call it adult use. You know, people say, well, you know, you, you, you don't want kids using it. Their brains aren't fully developed. And that's true. And that's true of alcohol. And that's true of cigarettes and lots of other things. Um, you know, this would be for adults, people over 21, who could be warned about any potential health benefits since there's some controversy about that um, but uh, you know then they can make a decision the way other adults do about consuming an intoxicant or skydiving or anything else that some people say is risky now I have a four-year-old myself and if something like this were to pass and um, how do you think 
we would, I don't know, do you think there'd be any need for educating the youth about this type of transition or history? I'm a big believer in education. I think information is your friend. Uh, And so I think you should talk to your kids about, at the appropriate time, whatever you decide that is, about all these things. Uh, You know, about alcohol, about sex, about cannabis, about you know, whatever it is that people need to be talked to about so they understand, you know, risks and, uh, you know, appropriate behavior and all of that. Cannabis is no different. We want, you know, but people say to me, because I have teenage children. Right. They say, you know, people who are on the other side say, do you want your kids smoking pot? And what I say is like, again, I don't want my kids doing anything ever probably like most parents, but if they're going to smoke pot, I don't want them smoking something laced with something. I don't want them smoking something where they don't, you know, you drink differently if, you, if you're having a beer versus grain alcohol. Right. It's important you know the difference. I want my kids to know what they're consuming. I also don't want uh, some police officer arresting my kids so they get kicked out of college, right. you know, for using it. Kids are going to, you know, individuate, experiment, whatever. And I want that to, that process to be safe. For a 19-year-old in college right now, mm-hmm. when they're busted at a basement party, what is the difference in penalty if they're holding a cup of beer versus holding a joint? No, it's, it's much worse with the joint, on average. The different schools are different. But I don't know, beer is considered, oh, well, it's just underage drinking. You know, that's a... That's yeah, a I she'll answer a question for us. Hi there. Does she want to talk to us? Let me, let me see. Great. Excellent. Hi, ma'am. Hi. What's, what's your name? Eileen Donahoe. Hi, Eileen. Uh, I'm Senator Dalen Leach, and I'm here with Tess. And we're just doing a podcast. We're talking about, uh, there's a bill in the legislature. Uh, it's my bill, actually, that would uh, legalize adult use cannabis, uh, recreational. We already have medical. Um, I just wonder if you have any general thoughts on that. I think it would be a great idea. Okay, and and why? Why? Because I think it's better than taking antidepressants. I think it has a relaxing quality about it, especially if you use it recreationally. Do you worry, because some people on the other side say, well, people will be driving intoxicated or people won't be able to do their jobs because everyone will be... People are intoxicated already with drinking regular alcohol, aren't they? Yes, they are. But And I think with people that smoke marijuana, their inclination is not to be on the road in many instances. It's to stay at home and enjoy the company of others or themselves, for that matter. Have some sour cream and onion potato chips and watch Animal Planet. That's right. Okay. You got it. You got it. Well, we really appreciate it. Any last thoughts or things? No, I hope it gets passed. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Appreciate it. Okay. So we got an older person for you. We got a few. I know. She may not know she's an older person. Okay. Don't mind him. (laughs) She may think. I will say, this is a bar that's been struggling in Westchester. Okay. I think if we give them a little exposure. Paul, you are on a roll here. Maybe maybe they'll let us in. Do you want to ask them? Not if you say that to them. Do you want to ask them real quick? Because I I think they're a great place, but they're brand new, and they need a little. Yeah, so do that aspect of it. Like, I hope John does that. Like, you know, says we can give you a little exposure and stuff like that. And It's a great place. Just I, I see it empty all the time. Yeah, no. Well, a new place to struggle. You know, you have to get, like, uh, you know, getting your foothold in the market is tough sometimes. Especially when there's a lot of competition. We were just talking about the penalizations. Oh, yes. So, uh, a lot of schools, uh, or a lot of, and a lot of people view it as like, oh, it's just harmless fun if you're doing underage drinking, where if you're smoking cannabis, well, that's the devil's alfalfa. Mm-hmm. That's jazz cabbage, okay? Uh, and they, they punish it much more severely, you know, and I think that's one of the things that is a, a big reason I'm into the, the, the destigmatization mm-hmm. uh, of it, because we should, tr- all, all of our cannabis policies have been irrational for so long, for 80 years. Uh, I'll give you an example. Hemp. Hemp was illegal uh, for, for 75 years. 
you can't get high on hemp. There's no, there's no th, there's not enough THC in hemp to get you high. It's not an intoxicant. So why but is it illegal? It was illegal because it was part of the cannabis family. Wow. Uh, but it's completely irrational. It's interesting. Okay, and so you know, like, let's have some rationality uh, to a policy. And you know, again, there's there, 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 if we discovered something tomorrow where if you let's say you uh, another kind of plant and you chewed on the leaf, you felt good for half an hour, no bad side effects, nothing. Uh, we would still ban it. Like, that would be our instinct, you know? The fear uh, of the unknown. The fear of the unknown. Just like a, a knee-jerk reaction to things. Sure. Uh, and so part of what we want to do is, is end that, because it's been so destructive to so many lives. I mean, so many people... People get... In, so what happens often is people get arrested. Let's say, because I talked about with you earlier about you're an African-American... Uh, much more likely to get arrested, much more likely to get incarcerated. But even if you're not incarcerated, let's say you're 19, you're arrested for cannabis, you're already going to have problems getting a job going forward. But you're, let's say you don't even get sentenced to jail, you just get probation. But then you uh, either uh, drink one night or you don't report to your probation officer or you forget to call them or whatever it is. Suddenly you violated your probation. And suddenly, you know, you're, you can be incarcerated for that. And then once you're in the vortex of the criminal justice system, often it's very hard to get out of it. Yeah. And so we don't want to put people into the criminal justice system unless they're a real threat to society. And they're a threat to individuals or, or you know, property. Not just because of a lifestyle choice. Lifestyle choices, are un the criminal justice system is uniquely bad at addressing things like lifestyle choices. But what about um, somebody whose lifestyle choice is to take opioids illegally? Well, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, and again, in, in Portugal, they legalized not just cannabis, but essentially all drugs, uh, or at least decriminalize them. And, and yeah, and actually, there are some people. There are some people who call for that here. And again, I don't. Th I mean, when you're dealing with opioids, unlike marijuana, you're dealing with something that's very physically addictive. So at this point, we're treating addiction, which is recognized by any everyone, the Center for Disease Control, everyone else, as a as a disease. But we're treating it as a criminal justice matter. Should we be putting people who are addicted to heroin, for example, into prison? I mean, think of how people now are getting addicted to heroin. They have surgery or they have an injury, and so they get opioids, right? And they, you know, I had a back problem a few years ago. I got a minor surgery on my back. They gave me 60 Percocet. Now, let's say I took all 60 Percocet and I got addicted to it. And then I go back and I'm like, I'm addicted to this. I, the doctor says, I'm sorry, you're, you know, your surgery was long enough ago. You, you're, we're cutting you off. But I'm still addicted. Often people go to the streets at that point. And this isn't like a, you know, this crosses all demographic lines. It crosses all socioeconomic lines, all age lines. And suddenly you have someone who has a good job, middle-aged person, never been in trouble in their life, and then suddenly they're going down to buy heroin here because they have an addiction that they have to feed. Is the answer treating them as a criminal? Or is the answer treating them as someone who needs help? Uh, I just don't, I don't see any value in treating addiction as a criminal justice matter. I think that has been a failed model. It's led to massive over-incarceration, uh, and it's led to a ton of human suffering, and hasn't actually helped anybody. That's very interesting, and you're giving I, a lot I had of a good friend, thoughts here. I had a friend who uh, was involved in the drug treatment industry, and uh, he, he, uh, he supported legalizing the more dangerous drugs first. Because he said that would that would yeah, sort of that. sort of force the the people pushing them and so forth into less into more benign drugs. Now I don't know if there's empirical data that supports that. If they have access legally to pot over Well no, if they had access to heroin then the guy then the guy who was selling stuff illegally would be pushing pot on people. Okay. Because that was still illegal. Now I'm not sure, if, you know, it's an interesting idea. I haven't thought it through. But certainly why are we putting people who have an addiction into into jail? I just don't understand that. Yeah. Let's go back to the studio. Let's answer some questions on the chat, and we're all done. Oh, we have questions from. Who well, the chat? we've abandoned it. Usually, I watch the chat myself, but since I'm the main host today, oh. I've abandoned my chat. Right, guys, I'll hold this. All right. Relax. We will read you the questions, and then yep, we're all good. Oh, you want us to get my chat again? This is yours. Thank you. So. We're back in the studio. They're switching We're back in the studio, back folks. to this feed. I'm going to take a quick water break. That really took it out of me. It was freezing. It was very cold, but you know what? You're a trooper. 
I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna try this. Does this make sense? Oh. We've got it a little wonked here. That's what I call it, wonked. Wonked. Okay. My fingers are... I can't even so move them. On, so on, see how this see. wraps around the front of your ear. It's like this. Yep. And then bend it down. So bend try down. and... Can you hear me? All right. It's All right. So, we yeah. are back. Yes, yes. I'm very curious to see what the conversation has been in the chat since we've been... Uh, you've been abandoned. I apologize, but we were really busy out in the town, and I think we got some really great yeah. difference of opinions from mm -hmm. a wider range of uh, people and uh, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So, who do we have in the chat, Paul? The Mary Jane Experience, that podcast sticker that we just saw. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, awesome. We saw your sticker on a lamppost. Yeah, Eileen from the bookstore was amazing. And yes, she was. She was so sweet. Welcome, Mary Jane Experience. Did you have any thoughts in particular regarding the conversation that we had about this bill or um, some of the people that we spoke to as well? You can, can you see the uh, text up there? Um, I can't really because it's blinding me a little bit, but if you can read it to me. Yeah, I will be able to read anything. And I think. No, so what has to happen is uh, in Pennsylvania, the legislature, in every state, the legislature is controlled by the majority party and they're, it's, that, that is controlled by the majority leader. So we need, frankly, uh, the way medical passed is I introduced the bill, again, couldn't get co-sponsors, uh, but then one day I, I knew I needed a Republican uh, because it had to be, I'm, I'm a Democrat and it had to be bipartisan. It couldn't be just some liberal Democrat pushing this. Um, with a Republican-controlled legislature. So uh, I w desperately searched for Republicans. I was, uh, it was hard. But finally, one day, a very conservative Republican, Mike Fulmer, came up to me, and he said he would support the bill. He was uh, suffering from lymphoma, and he had seen the mm. benefits of it. And so uh, once we had that bipartisan aspect of it, he worked on his caucus, I worked on mine. We went out together. People thought we were such an odd couple. They got a lot of attention. And so... The same thing will happen here. And what we need is a Republican legislator to be willing to go public on this. I've talked to a bunch of them who support it, uh, but they're all nervous about it. Uh, we've had discussions, very several discussions with individuals who are very close to coming forward. But if you want this to pass and you live in a district that has either in the House or the Senate is represented by a Republican, go meet with them. Tell them they, they, they'll be a hero. They need to, like Mike Fulmer was about this, but they need to come forward. Um, and then once we, once it's bipartisan, uh, I think we, you know, there's a chance we can move this, this session, um, which means probably in the fall, uh, but in the spring we could have hearings, et cetera. I mean, you know, uh, there's a lot we can do. Um, so, uh, talk to your Republican legislators, tell them to be willing to sign on publicly. That's the, the number one thing we need to yeah, have. That's a call to action here. Let me read it. Okay. Inner Peace Mentor says, I'm paralyzed just below the neck. I've been able to take cannabis legally. Oh, being able to take cannabis legally would save a fortune on anti-spasm drugs. Yeah. Well, he already can get, I mean, the, it, you, you the need to get a card from a certified doctor. And then uh, essentially it's a recommendation. You need to see a certified doctor. They will write a recommendation to the Department of Health. The Department of Health within two or three days will mail you a card. You take that card to the dispensary, you tell them what your condition is, and they will have people there who know exactly which strain will be most helpful to you. If you don't know the name of a certified doctor, if you email me, uh, it's dleach, first, first initial last name, D-L-E-A-C-H, at P-A Senate, one word, P-A-S-E-N-A-T-E dot -E com. I will, and you give me your address, I will give you a list of certified doctors within 10 miles of your house you could choose one, go to them, and you, 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 medical cannabis is already legal in Pennsylvania. You can get the help you need. Yes. Um, I'm not, you know, they could, our viewers, of course, be from other states. So hopefully if you are from Pennsylvania, and if not, you'll have to check with your state's legislation. Right. If I knew that, if you email me that the same email, tell me your state, I will tell you the protocol in that state. And if you need a certified doctor there, I will get you the name of someone. Excellent. 
Ian's comment says there will always be a black market, at least for giving people a safe option with a regulated market. They're trying to. No, I agree. And there, you're right. There, there will always be a black market. We eliminated prohibition on alcohol uh, in the 30s. Yet there's still a show that I come across every once in a while, one of flipping channels of people who Moonshiners. are bootlegging. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they make liquor in their basement in the backyard and the That's cops are always fake, chasing no? them. Uh, I, I assume it's true. I, there's always a market. There's, and there's a black market for cigarettes. I know that. Um, but we're trying to create a protocol that does not encourage the black market that keeps the prices uh, competitive or lower than the black market, which is hugely important. Um, but you'll always have a black market uh, in, in a lot of things. There's a black market for all kinds of things, not even intoxicant related. But if we can shrink the black market to a small percentage of the total market and have a thriving legal market, I think it would benefit everybody. Sure. Do we have any other questions you'd like us to cover today, my trusty producers over there? I think well, that we are good. This has been such a pleasure. Well, thank you, Tess. I'm grateful for the opportunity, and hopefully some someone learned something. I know I did. So. I certainly did. So this has been very interesting. We have been with...